Hello everyone, my name is Wojciech Woskowicz and I am about to present the paper General Theory of Name and Naming Policy, an outline. And it is the last part of this title, an outline that I need to stress. Uh, the paper is a part of a grant project uh, that I am currently conducting at the Institute of the Polish Language, Polish Academy of Science. What I'm going to do in this paper is to outline uh, the uttermost general conceptual framework for perceiving, classifying and discussing name and naming policies. Uh, so the aim is to catch a general map showing the relation between different and various factors and actors of every name and naming uh, policy. Uh, this map uh, will indicate or open several slots for more precise and more detailed uh, theoretical and empirical findings. But as I said, my goal is to create an outline of general arrangement of elements of every name or naming uh, policy. Uh, let me tell you first something about how the, the theory was created. Just uh, like many general theories, it is not based uh, on a specific set of names, but rather on a general observation of phonemic phenomena. It reuses some uh, parts of existing general linguistic theoretical frameworks. You will see that in the moment. And um, you know, what was intended to achieve is the theorist economy, which is about um, being able to grasp, to explain, and to classify the widest possible range of phenomena or objects with the least possible number of concepts. So the concepts need to be uh, the concepts need to be broad, but they cannot be fuzzy. Uh, so that are the um, general uh, properties um, that um, characterize the theory. And now, what is a policy? This is this is actually a question that I'm not going to answer here um, because um, policies are very broad and uh, complex concept, but probably uh, we uh, would all agree that the policy is an overall plan consisting of goals and means of achieving them. And the final thing, what is the difference between uh, a name and a naming policy? A name policy is about using names, whereas naming policy is about creating, giving, establishing new names. And yes, we may proceed to some theoretical foundations of uh, the proposed uh, theory. Um, one of them is or are theories of language policy. Of course, of course, there are plenty of theories of language policy, and here I will uh, refer only to those that I have indeed used. Two theories by Polish linguists, uh, Gaida and Klubaj, and then an, uh, a recent paper by a Polish linguist, Ewa Wolnicz Pawłowska, who um, pays attention to the relation between the concept of name policy and language policy and illustrates it uh, with some uh, examples of uh, such policies uh, in Poland. Uh, if you sum up, summarize and slightly um, supplement uh, the mentioned theories, uh, you get a list of uh, elements or factors and actors that are present in um, the structure of every language policy. 
And these elements need to be present in every structure of every name or naming policy as well. These are extra linguistic circumstances, linguistic circumstances, policy makers, policy executors, uh, axiological factors of initial values, uh, the desired effects or results, subject matter. So what uh, a policy is actually about, what is governed by a given policy, then means and method. Every language policy and every name or naming policy as well uh, consists of three layers. The layer of axiology, actions and results. And the second important um, theoretical funda foundation, act of name use or uh, name uh, establishment. And unfortunately, unfortunately, here I cannot uh, refrain from using a model that I have proposed in another paper. Uh, this is a set of factors uh involved in every act of using or giving establishing name an individual concept of the named object naming situation so the context uh name form name create your user address c so it's not very important but still needs to be the mm, creator or user and address the com community sorry and language system, the language in which a name is created or um, will be used. Uh, of course, uh, you are perfectly right if you recognize uh, the structure of the Pitch Act model uh, by Roman Jakobson in what is presented on your screen. This is the structure of uh, this classic uh, model was by Jakobson. Um, and you may have noticed that there is not an uh, element in this set for um, the object itself. It is due to the semantics of proper name. A name, a form, uh, is actually um, a sign uh, of a concept, it, it refers to a concept but not to uh, the object um, itself. Uh, and it is very important that every name and naming policy is in fact a scaled up projection of a single act of name use or name establishment. So every or rather, or, or rather almost every element within this structure of name or naming act uh, will have its counterpart in the structure of every name or naming policy. There are various uh, name and naming policies. They have various scope in the sense that various policies govern uh, different groups of proper names. The basic difference between uh, language policy and name or naming policy is that there is usually only one single language policy in a given state, uh, whereas there are usually many different name and naming policies made and executed by various uh, actors within one state. Um, there is a hierarchy, hierarchy of uh, name or naming policy. Some policies govern uh, the other. And that is uh, directly connected with the issue of global and local policy. Global policies govern local policy. Apart from that, we have overt and covert policies, prescriptive and customary policies, formal and pragmatic policies. Uh, what is the difference between global and local? Offered and covered policy. Let's take a look at the Article 59 of the Civil Registry Records Act um, of Poland. Um, a couple uh, have a newborn 
newborn child and they want to give names to this child legally. They go to a, a registry office and they declare names that are to be entered into a birth, register, birth certificate. So, uh, they may choose the names, but they may not choose more than two given names. They cannot uh, choose a diminutive form. They cannot choose a ridiculous or obscene name. Uh, however, they may choose a foreign name and they may uh, choose a name that does not indicate the child's sex. However, this name uh, needs to be assigned to a specific sex in its common meaning. So the name, the name Megan would do, and the name Joe, with the spelling as you see it on your screen, would not. Uh, the name Megan does not indicate the child's sex from the perspective of the Polish grammar, but in its common meaning is assigned to women. It is a global policy, an abstract policy. It governs many names, but uh, not directly. It creates only general rules and some limits. Uh, that parents need to comply with while choosing, uh, when choosing uh, names for their child. It is a global policy, an overt policy, uh, for it is well articulated in form of a uh, legal act. When, but then we have a local policy. Local policy governed by the global one. And the local policy is simply an agreement between um, the partners uh, in that couple um, who agree that the oldest son uh, shall inherit his paternal grandfather's given name and the oldest daughter shall inherit her maternal grandmother's given name. It is a local policy. It governs only two names. Uh, and uh, it is not written down, so it is a covered uh, policy. Then we may have uh, a prescriptive or customary uh, naming uh, policy. A prescriptive uh, policy defines name properties in advance. On the other hand, customary policy is somehow past oriented and uh, one of its main goals is to, is to establish names that fit into the already existing name pattern. And you have a brilliant example in Warsaw, in the district of Saska Kempa, where we have names uh, from the um, pre-war period, from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and the newest name dates back to the year 2002. Uh, you see the pattern. You have um, France Street, uh, Brazil Street, Canada Street, Mexico Street, Romania Street, so the pattern is the noun street and an, adje an adjective from uh, a country name. The main uh, road going through the district of Saska Kempa was the name Aleja Stanowiednoczonych, United States Avenue. Uh, but you see that the names were given in a long period, over a long period of time. And the main goal was to create names that fit the, the already established naming uh, pattern. Then you have formal and pragmatic policies, but it would be rather more accurate to speak of formal and pragmatic aspects of every name or naming policy. Um, uh, formal aspects, formal aspects about uh, of a policy are about, uh, so to say, 
signifiant are about um, formal language properties of uh, names given or uh, used due to a given policy, uh, and pragmatic aspects are about what is intended to be achieved with the names used or created due to a specific um, policy. Of course, it is mainly uh, marketing and branding where uh, pragmatic policies are um, created and executed. Uh, and this is a general map um showing uh the structure the, the arrangement of all elements factors and actors of every policy and here we have simply uh the structure of uh, a single act of uh, naming or name use because as i said there um is a link between the structure of uh, a policy and the structure of a single uh, act uh, and most of elements have their um, counterparts uh, in the other um, uh, model. Uh, okay, let's start with values. Uh, these are subjective um, entities um, located in. Uh, subjective psychological sphere of acting um, actors. Then we have policy makers and policy executors. They may be of, uh, in, of an institutional or non-institutional non -institutional, uh, nature. Uh, and uh, this hierarchy uh, corresponds with the hierarchy of um, policy. Uh, there are global policies that govern local policies. Uh, let's get back to this example uh, of giving names uh, to a newborn child. Um, the global policy was made by the Polish parliament. Then this global policy is executed both, with, uh, both by uh, uh, an, a head of a uh, uh, register office and by parents uh, who are um, creators of a dependent local policy and executors as well. Then we have uh, circumstances, linguistic circumstances are actually about the language in which uh, a name is to be given or used and extra linguistic circumstances cover things like our political system in a country culture um, ideologies social economical situation and so on and so forth circumstances influence means and methods and depending on the type of policy depending on whether it is a global or, or local policy, uh, a policy may have different uh, objects and results. Uh, global over policies produce documents and acts of policies, whereas uh, local policies, it is usually local policies that result directly in a uh, name. Uh, as I said, there are links between elements of both, uh, of both um, models um, and it is a general model. Uh, let me end with an example of a very special global uh, renaming uh, policy. Most changes most name changes made due to the George Floyd protest uh, are uh, due to a uh, global policy. However, it is a global policy that was not uh, made by an institution. It was made by people uh, and it was made by the society. Uh, 
it is a global renaming policy uh, that um, that is actually an overt policy because uh, the demands were quite clearly uh, articulated. Uh, this global uh, renaming policy uh, is was then executed or is being executed by institutional executors by means of uh, legal act uh, resolutions and so on and uh, so forth uh, resulting in renaming um, urban facilities streets worth uh, buildings and so on and uh, so uh, forth as i said uh, the aim is to create a general structure a general outline of the structure and arrangement of elements of every name and naming policy thank you very much for your attention and i would be happy to answer your uh, question okay a question from dennis nelson um and the question is have you worked with toponyms oh yes uh yes i see the, um, there's a question if i have uh, worked with uh, toponyms uh, yeah. i have provided an example uh from the area of anthroponymy because it is not area uh, that i specialize with uh, my main area are toponyms uh, indeed um and uh, yes maybe we could uh, get unfortunately we cannot get back to the uh, scheme this structure uh, but i believe um uh, this um uh, uh, this this uh, structure that was shown in the presentation works even better with um, toponyms uh, because there are um, several uh, legal regulations. Let me stick to examples from Poland. There are several legal regulations uh, concerning uh, geographical names for creating and establishing and managing uh, what names um uh, so uh there are there is well actually one uh, general policy uh one global policy uh, articulated in several uh legal acts that state uh, for instance that it is uh the minister of interior uh, that establishes uh, geographical names of names of geographical features um and names of um, uh, towns villages localities simply uh, and uh, it is uh, local authorities so for instance city council that is responsible for establishing um names of urban facilities street names and so on and so forth uh, but then uh, a city council can, for instance, create its own local uh, policy by indicating that uh, we only um, name uh, streets after people who, who have been dead for uh, at least 10 years now. And so that is uh, already kind of a local uh, policy. It is an overt policy, however, because such regulations uh, do take a form of a uh, resolution of a city council, for instance. Um, mm. uh, as I said, Thank you. it's a quite general uh, model, a general scheme, uh, and uh, the fun is to, uh, to put uh, very um, specific situations to locate them within this general uh, structure. But, uh, uh, actually, I work mainly with toponyms. This is my area. And so, frankly speaking, uh, this is the type of proper names that I had in mind um, when I created this uh, outline. But yes, yes then I, I tried to apply it to other category, categories of 
of names and it worked somehow. Of course, uh, it would be uh, the best thing if um, there is a name or a naming policy that does not um, fit into this uh, pattern on or theory, then because then it, it it would go to show that it is uh, it's it, it can be somehow um, uh, validated and uh, improved. So yes, mm. this would be our toponyms. Okay, thank you very much. There is another question, and I think um, well I, I'm going to read it. So if those streets in Warsaw use an adjective form of a country. Might it be better to translate them into English as Brazilian Street rather than Brazil Street? And that is a question from Cleve, Cleve Evans. Mm -hmm. uh, a good point, a good point. Uh, yes, uh, if I were to translate uh, or um, render these Polish names uh, into English in a way that... Um, conveys the structure of the original Polish name, then yes, it should be rather Brazilian or Czech or Canadian uh, street rather than uh, Brazil street. But yes, I believe that it is a more natural uh, structure in English. I'm not a native speaker, but that, that was my guess, that a more natural um, name pattern in the English uh, language is, for instance, Brazil street and not Brazilian street. Uh, well, um, uh, proper names in translation is another great topic for uh, theoretical um, theoretical uh, um, interest. Uh, whether we stick to this original structure in the in the original language and try to illustrate it somehow in the language into which we are uh, doing the translation. Or are we sticking to the more natural structure in this um, uh, language into which uh, we do this tr uh, translation? So, yes, I try to stick to the uh, typical model uh, that is, I believe, more, more uh, common in uh, English. But if, as I said, if, if I were mm -hmm. to illustrate the structure of, of, of uh, the Polish name, then yes, then the translation should be rather Brazilian street, because it is Brazilian street in Polish and not Brazil street. Okay, um, thank you, thank you very much, thank you, uh, Wojciech.